is. I'm Nick. It's time to check out yet another Z490 board. I obviously don't have it here. Once again, I'm very nice. I loan all of my things to people all the time. But today we're checking out the Z490 Aorus Extreme. It's the uh, really overkill version of the Z490 board that Aorus makes. It's basically the same as the Water Force board. However, it doesn't have a water block on it. So yeah, as usual, this video is not a review, it's just an overview. So let's roll the intro, then have a little bit more of a chat about the Z490 Aorus Extreme. Alright, as I mentioned in the intro, this is not a review of the Z490 or its Extreme. It's basically an overview so you can get an idea of what comes in the box when you buy a brand new motherboard. And in this case, there is a lot of stuff. So I'm going to stop talking and we're going to check out what's in the box. All right, ladies and gents, let's check out the Z490 Aorus Extreme. It is uh, extremely cool. Okay, let's uh, get the motherboard out of the box and take a closer look at all of the things that come with it. First off, we've got this. It's the, uh, the sheet of stickers, the one with the Aorus Passport sticker that will get you into Aorus land. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, whatever, right? Uh, okay, let's take a look at this little invention. All other motherboard manufacturers, take heed, take notice, check this out. It's all of the drivers on a USB stick. See? It can be done. You can do it. Okay. Next up, we've got the multi-language guy. <laughs> this will basically show you how to install the CPU in your socket and yeah, just basically how to do it for every type of socket. This is a pretty standard inclusion in Aorus boards. Next up, we've got the Z490 Aorus Extreme user manual. Please use this if you're going to be using this motherboard. It will show you how to do everything. It'll tell you where everything is in the BIOS, what everything is on the board, and yeah, just everything you need to know without using Dr. Google. Next up, we're going to open one of these other flaps and reveal all of the flappy RGB goodness. This is the RGB Fusion 2.0 stuff. It's a bunch of address RGB connectors and extension cables and all of the sweet stuff that all of you RGB addicts out there really, really love. All right, there's some SATA cables. These are nice braided ones. These are for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning RAS drives. Uh, it's nice that they include this many, but as I keep saying with these E490 boards, I find it very unlikely that you'll be using these with this motherboard. There's also a bunch of Aorus Velcro straps to ease yourself in with some extra cable management. I don't know why I said that like, the count from Sesame Street, but yeah, anyway. There's a USB DAC. Well, this actually serves two purposes. The first purpose is it works as a USB audio interface, and the second purpose is it actually will isolate the sound from the USB bus, so there's no additional noise, there's no distortion, there's none of that, and this is a great addition, and I hope they start to filter this down into the lower end boards because I want one of these pretty badly. Next up is the other flap of goodness. This is a USB 2.0 breakout cable because this motherboard doesn't have any real direct headers for things on the board. Everything is handled by breakout cables and I am all for this. I like this idea. It makes it easier to cable manage and it makes it a lot easier to plug stuff in. Next up is the little G connector. Now this is the front panel connector for all your lights and switches and all that jazz. And this actually plugs into another breakout cable, which is actually quite nice. However, probably not required, but it's nice that they give you the option if you really want it. And speaking of that breakout cable, here it is. This is the breakout cable for all the front panel lights and switches and all the other jazz that turns your computer on, shows that your computer's on, and does all that fancy stuff that lets you know that it's alive. Okay, let's open uh, this last flap here. This is a flap that contains two more shark fin antennas for the Wi-Fi 6 or the Wi-Fi AX that is built into the Z490 Aorus Extreme. Pretty standard stuff for most of these Wi-Fi boards. All right, let's uh, stop talking about all the accessories and all that jazz and let's get the motherboard out of the box so we can take a little bit of a closer look at all of the extremeness of the Z490 Aorus Extreme. All right, speaking of flaps, there is another flap. Yes, and this time the flap is on the board. Let's lift up the flap and see what the flap reveals. There's a front panel audio connector and some BIOS, which is for the dual BIOS setup on this motherboard. If we take a little bit of a look at the right hand side of the board, you'll see there's a USB 2.0 breakout cable connector, addressable RGB header and 12 volt RGB header, a USB 3.0 header, 
There's six SATA connectors for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. There's also a USB type C header just a little bit further back. There's some more RGB headers, another 12 volt RGB header and another five volt addressable RGB header and the breakout connector for the front panel lighting and everything. There's also the 24 pin power connector to send all of the juice to the motherboard and five PWM fan connectors. There's also a power button and a reset button just behind those five PWM fan connectors. This is if you're bench testing or doing LN2 overclocking, makes it a little bit easier. Along the top of the board, there is a one press OC ignition button. I'm guessing it's an overclocking button. There's a post LED screen, a CPU fan connector, and the CPU opt header to plug in your AIO or your water pump if you're doing a custom loop. There's also two eight pin EPS power connectors to send all the juice to that brand new 10900K. Yes, it's for all the juice. You know what that's about. And there's also a PWM fan connected next to that for your rear case fan. There's three by 16 times PCIe slots. The top one is wide by 16, then one in the middle is by eight, and the bottom one is by four. It's covered and surrounded by all of these huge heat sinks that dissipate the heat of the M.2 drives which lie underneath, which we're gonna check out in a moment. There's also a 16 phase digital VRM setup with 90 amp power stages. It is absolutely overkill and it's got this like this black powder coated finish which is actually quite nice so if you take a little bit of a closer look on the left hand side you'll notice there is a heat pipe that connects both of these chonky boy heat sinks together very nice let's pop that lga 1200 socket open so you can take a little bit of a closer look you'll also notice that the cooler mounting is the same as the 11.5x boards which is basically everything from the past 12 years so if you've got a cooler it should be compatible and if we look right inside the socket you'll notice that the locating tabs are towards the bottom of the socket and i've said this in every motherboard video we've done it's just to make sure you don't try and jam your older cpu in there there's also four ddr4 ram slots which support 100 and 28 gigs of total memory with 5000 megahertz overclocked memory very impressive stuff and if we flip the board over you can see there is a full cover backplate which helps dissipate the heat over the entire surface area of the board this isn't just for aesthetics this is actually for thermals as well so this is a very nice addition okay let's do what we always do and speed up the footage a little bit so we can pull off all of these heat sinks to show you what lies beneath there's a lot going on here and yeah we're going to take a little bit of a closer look right now there's one there's two and three. Hey, two and three was together. All right. There's three NVMe M.2 slots which support PCIe Gen 4 storage. However, like I've said in previous videos, this will be definitely dependent on the CPU that you choose. I'm not saying 10th Gen is compatible. I'm saying the chipset is compatible with PCIe Gen 4. And the rear I.O., we've got the Q flash button, a clear CMOS button, the Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi AX connectors. There's there's 2.5 gigabit ethernet, there's 10 gig ethernet next to it, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, some more USB, some USB 3.2 ports, HDMI port, there's also 7.1 digital surround sound with SPDIF out, and an integrated IO shield for all of that integrated IO shield goodness. But enough out of me, let's check out the B-roll, let's go.
Hope you guys enjoyed that first look and overview of the Z490 Aorus Extreme. It's a uh, pretty overkill board, 16 phases VRM, 90 amp power stages. It's got all the stuff that all the people who care about specs care about, and it's all there on this brand new Z490 board that supports 10th gen Intel. Now, this isn't obviously going to be our last Z490 board, but I decided that I would show you what the next one would be. I don't know when this video is coming out because I haven't filmed it yet, but I wanted to be nice and show you that we do have the Z490 Vision G. We've got a lot of questions on social media about this board and if we're going to be checking it out. Yes, we've had it as long as all the other boards. However, this is uh, somehow fell to the bottom of my Z490 pile, but this is my favorite looking Z490 board that actually anyone has made so far so we will be checking this out in the next few days so keep your eyes peeled for that if you're getting bored of motherboard videos as well let me know <laughs> jokes on you there's going to be way more <laughs> and if you like the music you heard here i make all the music and grab it over on our patreon and if you want to support the channel you can hit that join button or get early access to videos just like this one over on Flowplane. if you didn't like this video you know what to do Hit that dislike button twice. Once again, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek, and I'm out of here. Bye bye.